Hi, I'm Earl S. K. from Bitter Old Goons Gaming, and welcome to episode four in our series on restoring and converting an old Burger Time cabinet using Raspberry Pi and Retro Pi. Today we're going to do the screen. about a month since we released our last tech video. I was waiting for uh, this really sweet bezel to come in, but now that it's here, we can uh, go ahead and show you how to select a monitor, how to mount the monitor, uh, where you might want to get a bezel like this, what it will cost, and we'll also describe a few other options in case uh, you have to deal with something a little more complicated than this, because uh, I'll be frank, this was way easier than it should have been. So uh, with that, We'll get the components out on a table and we'll review them and I'll show you where you can find this stuff for yourself. Well, here we have the components that we're going to need to mount this particular screen in that particular cabinet. And uh, the parts you're going to need is going to vary quite a bit depending on what type of arcade cabinet you have. Many of them have a vertical uh, screen layout that's actually you know, vertical when you face it requiring you to mount this quite firmly. Uh, some of them cocktail setups have different size screens. The size of the CRT and uh, the shape and, and, and layout is going to change from arcade cabinet. From arcade cabinet. But this one in particular is quite easy. It's uh, replacing a 19 inch color CRT. And this particular monitor fits that almost perfectly. So what you're going to need is if you have an arcade cabinet like mine that has no chassis, no mounting hardware, no frame, you're going to need to start building your own to mount your monitor. In our case, we use half-inch plywood, and uh, you can also use three-quarter inch MDF or medium density fiber board. You're going to need some basic carpentry tools such as a square or a level tape measure, brackets, screws, and some pieces of wood to mount to where you want. You're going to need a monitor, and in this case we have a Dell 2007 FBP Ultra Sharp. It's a 1600 by 1200 monitor. It's a 20.1 inch. And uh, you're also, this one's a DVI connection, so we're going to need an HDMI to DVI connector to connect that to the RetroPi. And of course, you're going to need the power cables and the HDMI cable to get that to the RetroPi. Raspberry Pi, rather. And finally, you're going to need some kind of bezel. And because we're trying to restore it to looking outwardly as similar to a Burger Time cabinet as possible, we have a replica tempered glass bezel made by thisoldgame.com, $99 US and unfortunately it's $70 US shipping to Canada, but this thing fits perfectly. And uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you, it's uh, also a hell of a match for this monitor and it just lucked out that the aspect ratio is pretty gosh darn perfect, as uh, you can see. And that's sort of more or less how we're going to mount that. One thing not shown on the table that you're also going to need is a power bar to power your speakers, your Raspberry Pi, your monitor, in our case also the fluorescent light for the uh, marquee above. So let's go take a look at the cabinet and I'll show you what I've done for the power inside and we'll show you how to measure up the first part of your mounting hardware. Okay, we've got our cabinet opened up and uh, I want to point out a few aspects of my particular arcade cabinet here. These metal brackets down here is where the CRT chassis would normally mount. It's meant to slide in from the back and it bolts into place here and fills up the gap between that and the bezel. When I got this arcade cabinet it didn't have the CRT or any of the chassis parts in it so we're going to have to build our own and that's where the plywood comes into it. One other thing I want to point out is that the bezel, because it's made for this cabinet and it's a restoration piece, it'll just fit nicely right on top of there. So to uh, get the plywood to the right measurement, the tape measure, Measure the inside width, in our case it's 23 inches, and I'm going to make it as tall as the bezel mount, which is 20 and a half. So, I simply cut a piece of half inch plywood, 23 inches by 20 and a half. So let's get this thing turned around and I'll show you how I laid out the power and we'll go throw that piece of plywood in and see how that monitor sits. Here we have the back of the arcade cabinet all opened up, and uh, just want to point out a few things. First one being, a power supply. Uh, what we've done here is we've taken a power bar, we've actually opened up the power bar and we've soldered the chrome switch at the top into the switch of the power supply so that when this is plugged in it automatically fires up the monitor, the Raspberry Pi, the marquee and the speakers. 
we bundled the, and by the way, I've used a heavy extension gauge cable for that. It's double insulated so that, uh, you know, the switch is well protected. We've used proper quick connects up at the switch at the top as well. So everything's well insulated and grounded. It's important you do that. We have the power cable for the uh, marquee fluorescent up here. And we have the speaker power and uh, signals coming down here. I've reused the, uh, the wire holds that came with the cabinet just to hold those things nicely in place. We have our HDMI cable from the uh, Raspberry Pi that's going to go over top of that piece of plywood. And we have our monitor power cable. One other thing I want to point out is when I mounted my uh, power bar here, I also unsoldered and resoldered the extension cable front so I could run it through the grommet so that it looks complete, clean, and legit when uh, you've got the black thick gauge cable coming out the bottom. Okay, so we have a plywood here. Make sure we have it facing the right way. Pull these cables back, make myself some room. And it just slides right in place. Clean those up a little bit there. I'm going to take my power and HDI cable, throw them over the top. I need to plug those in. And that's basically it. Let's grab the back and we'll put it back on. There you go. Legit if rustic looking, but let's go see how that monitor fits in there. Well, here we have our plywood in place. Uh, as you can see, it fits nice and snug in there. <clears throat> I, in fact, feel no need to screw that down because this thing's not going to be doing a lot of moving. We've got our wires coming over the top. And finally, we have our monitor. Now, check this out. This monitor is fairly thick. As you can see, you know, it's got some thickness to it. But check this out. One moment. I have some temporary spacers I'm just going to place under it. Hold it through more or less where I want it. This is crazy. <clears throat> I'll demonstrate how perfectly this fits with this square. So I have it sitting on the bottom of the bezel and the uh, sort of the level is going across, a little two foot level. And top to bottom is very little gap. There's a little bit more gap on this side, so we're going to put a small spacer under there, probably a piece of felt. But other than that, we just have to basically put the brackets in and hold the thing in place. So, I'm going to get to doing that now. Well, we've cut some wood shims to hold this thing in place. And the next thing we're going to want to do is place the bezel on it and adjust the position of the monitor. Once we have that where we want it, we're going to peel premium glue those in place. You can use wood screws if you want to pre-drill. Uh, however, for this application, since we're not holding the monitor from uh, the backside, we're just setting it in there, the glue will be fine. This stuff is as strong as nails and easier to work with in some cases. So let's put the bezel in place and see if we need to make any adjustments. Be very careful when handling glass. There are sharp edges on this thing. So I can see vertically it's perfect. It just has to come over a little bit.
that looks pretty much perfect to me. So the next step will be to uh, remove the bezel entirely and uh, glue down those supports. I want to be real sure, folks. Real sure. Okay, now we have it perfect. Now I'm going to glue those things in place. This is when you're glad you don't have this right on top of the monitor. Because now that we've removed it, we haven't moved anything. So I'm going to very carefully Apply a small amount of PL Premium. It's one block. I'm do the second one while I have the goop running. And that's going to want to drip everywhere, so make sure you have a place to put it. Now we can very, very carefully place these in. Now they set in about 10 minutes. So once we have them in there, we're going to check the bezel again. Be very careful with the glass. And uh, believe it or not, that's it. We're just going to let that set now and button it up.
And there you have it. That monitor is installed. It's permanent. Uh, easy to access, easy to service if required, very easy to put in. This is about as easy as they get. So I'm pretty happy with it. We'll demonstrate it. Let's see what uh, see if she does what she's built for, folks. So we're launching Burger Time from the Raspberry Pi with the screen installed. But of course, I don't have the controls configured. <laughs> so I'll have to reconfigure the controls, but that's because I unplugged the encoder. But as you can see, it looks great. Um, if I need to, I can go ahead and adjust the, uh, the position of the screen. Raspberry Pi lets you do that. One thing I should mention is you need to edit the config file in the Raspberry Pi um, folder to rotate this by three. So that makes it go into the four by three aspect ratio of the vertical one we want. So there you have it, folks. Bezel installed, monitor installed. And uh, in our next edition, we're going to uh, restore the exterior paint, install the T-Track, and then that'll be it for this beautiful machine. Thank you for watching. I'm Roll SK from Bitter Old Goons Gaming.